So now we got a form with multiple fields. We added some custom styling and we also make sure that we can validate the input data, but that we can also use it eventually in our view. And at the moment we're just printing it. Now it would be more realistic that we of course want to store it in a database. And therefore let's add a model. So in the models py file, I'll add a model as we learned it before in the course, I'll add a new class, name it review and extend models.model here and then add any fields we want. For example, the user name field, which is then a char field now from models, not from forms, but from models, which then sets up a char field, a text field in the database. And we can add some options here as well, like the max length, which we also already validate on the form here. Now we can also validate it on the model to make sure that before data is inserted in the database, we validate it again. Of course, if we're sure that we don't have any scenario where a too long string might reach this model, we can omit this. And in this case, we are sure that this will never happen because we are already validating the user input. So unless we're overriding that in our view later, then there is no way that a longer string reaches our form. So I will actually not add max length here. And we can configure it with all the options I talked about in the earlier course sections. So now here I have a username char field. I have my review text field and that here is a text field, which is a, a database field for longer text. So no char field, but a text field. That's a difference to my form now. There it was a char field with a different widget. Now for the database, for the model, there is a difference. There are two different fields we can use. And for the rating, I'll use an integer field here as well. And we could again add validators for a min value and a max value if you wanted to. But again, I will rely on my input from the form. So with that, we got a model set up, a review model, which of course has some similarities to our form uh, without the configuration here, because here, of course, we have some form specific configuration, which is related to how the form fields are being output. The model is about how data is stored in a database. That's easy to mix up, but it's a different thing. The model is not about fetching user data, but about storing data in a database. And before we fetched input via the admin interface, now we're fetching input via a user facing interface, a custom form. So the model is again, just focused on storing data in a database. Nonetheless, it is of course quite similar. And with that model set up here, we should add a max length to char field, even though we know that we never will actually insert data that is uh, too long, but for the char field, max length is actually not just there for validation, but also for the database setup to configure that database field efficiently. So that's why I'm reminded here that we have to add it. But with that, we now set up the model and now we can again make and run our migrations to create that database file and set up the database in there. So I'll quit this here and then simply run make migrations here. And then thereafter run the migrate command to write those migrations into our database file and to set up this database with a reviews table with this structure. And now that this is done, we can restart our server and go to the view to use this new model to store our data instead of just printing it. So if we have valid data, now we can create a new review by instantiating this review class, which we have to import from dot models. We import the review class like this, instantiate it down, this, down here like this, and then here populate the different properties, the different values of this review class of this review model with the values we got from our validated form. So from this cleaned data, which we printed before, for example, here set 
the username, user underscore name equal to form.cleaned data. And then there it's user underscore name as well, because in our form, we have that username field name here. Set the review underscore text field in our model equal to form.cleaned data review text again accessing review text on this dictionary because that's also the field name I picked here. And we wouldn't have to use the same property names here in the review form class as we do in the model class. I did do it here also on purpose, but you don't have to use the same property names. We could use different names here in the model than we do in the form. But here I have the same names, hence we have some similarities. And now last but not least, I'll therefore set the rating keyword argument when we instantiate our review class and set this to form.cleaned data rating. Like this. Now let me add a couple of line breaks here to make this a bit easier to read. And that's now my finished review model, which is instantiated. And therefore we can then of course call review.save here. And this will now save this review model, a new review entry to the database with that data we're extracting from our form, with that validated data to be precise. So this will only happen if the user entered valid data. And now if we save everything, if we go back to localhost 8000, if I add Maximilian here, your feedback, this was awesome. And we could change the styling of this text area as well to use the default font, by the way, if we wanted to. And give it a rating of five and I click send. We're on thank you. And now we don't see it here, but the data was written to the database. And of course, to see it, we can quit this development server and use the good old shell again, which we used before in this course already, to import from reviews.models. So from this models py file in the reviews app folder, our review class, and then with review dot objects dot all, we can see that we do have one review stored. And if I access this through its index, and if for example, access the username, we see that this is Maximilian. So the data we entered in the form really was stored into the database. And of course, it's totally up to you what you want to do with such entered data. It's your application. But once you have it, you can do with it whatever you want. I just wanted to show you how you can get it with this forms class, with your customized form being rendered in the template, and with our view logic, where we differentiate between a post and a get request. And for a post request, we use the form object, this built-in forms feature by Django, to validate that form and get the validated data or send back the form with potential error messages we might have. Now there's just one last thing, one last improvement left, which will also very often help you.